In this video, we're going to be looking at two ways to cache out PyroSims for use inside Houdini. Let's just save our scene and set our project location first. And I'm going to save it on my one terabyte hard drive. You'll want to pick your hard drive with the most space because depending on the scale and complexity of your PyroSim, you'll need a decent amount of space for Houdini to write to. So now we can go to the smokeless flame tool inside the PyroFX shelf set, click on it, select the cylinder and hit the enter key. And there's our smokeless pyro object. We're just going to first change the playback option from loop to play once and turn on real-time playback. Oh, and let's go enable OpenCL because I'm running a FirePro W8100, which supports it. And by the way, we are in the pyro solver node. So let's play it back. Yeah, those flames are pretty big, so let's tone it down a bit. Let's see it now. That's better. And by the way, I've sped up the playback recording so as to keep the video not longer than it needs to be. Now, you'll notice that we have this blue line here. That indicates that our simulation has been cached to memory, which means we're able to scrub it and play it back pretty quickly. But if we increase the resolution of the fire, our sim may or may not all be cached to memory. This is where caching comes in handy. So let's go back up to object level, hit the L key to organize your nodes, and double click to go inside the pyro import node. In the import pyro fields node, we're going to put the display flag on it. The purple flag indicates that it's set to a render flag. Just left mouse button click on it, and click on the export to file tab. So here you can set the location of where to save out the geometry data to and I'm just going to name it cache underscore flames. And if you're wondering about the .sc extension, it's short for BLOSS Compressor, which is similar to using gzip, but better because it can write compressed archives faster to disk than gzip with similar compression rates. TMI? Maybe, maybe not. So let's hit render to save out the 240 frames of flame geometry data. And we're just going to time lapse the save. So about five minutes later, we have our geometry data written out. And we can click on load from disk so that Houdini will just read from the .bgo compressed geometry files. This will allow us to click anywhere on the timeline and load the corresponding frame of the PyroSim without having to cook the sim from scratch. If you're wondering about the lack of color, note that this method of caching is more lightweight and thus quicker, but it only stores partial data, which is wireframes are gray, because the colors are in the visualization options. That said, we can easily add back a volume visualizer node to get back our flame colors. Just hit the tab key and type volume visualization, select it, and we'll move the display flag down to the visualization node. And let's start adding back the parameters to bring back the fire color. We're gonna select temperature as the emission field and select heat as the emission color field and enable emission color range. Change the color preset to black body. And we don't see anything yet in the viewport because our emission scale is set to zero. That's probably too bright and not really looking the way it did. So let's change one of the colors in the RAM. And let's tweak the range value to get a more flamey look. Maybe a bit more bright. And let's play it back. What we can also do is experiment with different color ramps to get a different look. The infrared, for example. So you can more easily visualize your pyro without having to wait for a sim to cook. Okay, let's delete this node and we're gonna check out the other way to cache out a sim. We'll just uncheck load from disk and go back up to object level. And if you click on the PyroSim node, you'll see that there's the option to play back simulation. Double click to go inside and we're going to see how we can write out the sim data for it. Click on the output node, and here we can set where we want to save the .sim data to. Let's give it a name. And because we saved out our scene at the beginning, we're still pointing to the one terabyte hard drive. Click on accept, and there's our file name. And we're gonna use the save to disk in background option, which is new in Houdini 14. 
This allows us to continue working in Houdini while the dots and data is being written out behind the scenes, so to speak. The safety disk will lock up Houdini, so you can use that if you want to have an excuse for an extended break or go for coffee or something. Okay, let's hit Control S to save our scene like it asked. And we're going to try it again. Click on the Open Scheduler. And you can see that Houdini is writing out our sim data here. And I've also checked on the Clear Completed Jobs option, so the job will just disappear from this window once it's done. Let's just minimize the scheduler. And you can see that we are free to work in Houdini while the sim data is being written out. And about eight minutes later, we can see that our sim data has been written out. The job is gone, which means it's done. Let's go back up to object level and we'll enable playback simulation. Select the sim data that we wrote out, cache underscore flames. And if you're seeing a bunch of sequence files like this, just turn this option on here. And we're gonna select cache underscore flames. Hmm, wait a minute. How come we're still seeing the gray flames.bgo files? Probably because we still have the display flag set to the import power fields node. Yep, we gotta set that back to a render flag and put the display flag back on the import pyro visualization node. Control and left mouse button click on this, and then go back up to object level. Let's play it back. And if we double click to go inside the pyro sim node, You'll see that it says Network in Playback Mode, which means that Houdini is reading the files that we wrote out earlier, so you can scrub through the timeline relatively quickly. The benefit of caching or writing out .sim files is that it stores all data like velocity, collision, density visualizers, and others, which you can then use to debug your sim and modify accordingly. .sim caching also lets you resume if you have a power outage or crash partway through a multi-day sim. Just take note that the files are bigger and thus take longer to write. And those are two ways to catch out sims for use inside Houdini.